This is K Critiques. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of K Critiques where we discuss all things South African television. Now, today we are discussing Outlaw Season 1, Episode 25 to 30. Now, before we get into the episodes, let us start with a quick recap. So, in the last episode, we saw Cecilia and Guanele getting back together and the wedding is back on. Gladi raided the Lesotho farmers and Uleruo and Moritlo were nowhere to be seen. Unoluandle is still not back in her marital home. And without any further ado, let us get into episode 25 to 30 because it was messy as hell we see that Utlari he's still in Joba he's enjoying himself he's busy with other women and Unyakalo is tired of getting cheated on which is valid I mean getting cheated on by two brothers or rather two cousins that is foul and she needs to get her revenge or I feel like she actually needs to just get her life together and go find someone who actually loves her but what does she do she goes to her mother and what does her mother do gives her love potion and she actually uses it like <laughs> i'm like if you've reached the stage of actually giving a man a love potion you need to just leave because he doesn't love you like you can't force somebody to love you i'm pretty sure this is gonna backfire the day Nyagalo wants to leave Vlad. on the other hand in kzn we see usi here giving notice at the hospital she's planning to leave her job to focus on being a wife she's gonna be a stay-at-home wife and she wants to grow the family look after the home and all that other stuff and i'm like this might just be the dumbest thing i've ever heard quitting your job for a man that is crazy to me like it's a different story if cj wants to quit because she wanted to quit but she's quitting because of guanelle and my thing is she worked so hard to be a doctor and she was busy fighting yeah, yeah. she doesn't even want to change her surname and now all of a sudden she's quitting her job for this guy and i think it might have to do with her being guilty because of Leruo. that's why she's overcompensating but this might just be the dumbest thing you've ever heard the day guanele either leaves her or she wants to leave him she's gonna have a gap in her cv she's not gonna have money for herself her own money to be able to sustain herself which is very very dangerous actually like as a woman you must have your own money you cannot fully depend on a man i don't care whether or not they are high school sweethearts they've been dating for a long time you trust him that he's never ever gonna leave you listen unless you're like nyakalo and you actually give him a love potion you better not sacrifice your career for a man please for my own sake see here what the hell are you doing her quitting her job she doesn't even want to and she feels like she's losing herself we actually see her breaking down she's mourning and the loss of her career she's grieving she's crying and until he just doesn't get it like until he's like this man has money he's gonna spoil you blah 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 why are you crying over being a doctor and she's like you don't understand i've lost my parents and now i'm losing my career i just feel like i'm losing everything about myself i'm losing my sense of identity i'm losing myself one day he just doesn't get it she's like just grin and bear it and it's like no like this is the 21st century we cannot still be chasing after men and looking for male validation and that men are gonna look after us like as much as yeah you can aspire to that but it should come from you it can't be something that you force on somebody else and i feel like sometimes older people don't get it anyways back in lesotho the top four wants a meeting because of daddy's actions obviously they're like we need to 
discipline him he needs to be punished because what he's doing is unacceptable they go there and studies are not remorseful at all he's like we are all these so what's the difference between me stealing from Sutu farmers and KZN farmers as long as it's not people from my village blah 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 all of this and he actually threatens them with a gun but then the gun jams <laughs> yeah i was so happy in this moment i'm like finally finally we are getting rid of Utlari, but, but obviously that's not gonna happen so the top four actually ties them up and starts burning them alive barunya kalo comes rescues them and shoots the other three members of the top four and now she's standing there and she's like look at how the tables turn and then that is like oh my love and Nyakaru is like my love you are busy chasing every single skirt out here and now you want to call me your love boy bye and gives him an ultimatum is like it's either i untie you and you marry me or i leave you here to burn to death obviously that is like hey marry you are you crazy and Nyakaru is walking away but then eventually daddy actually decides you know what let me propose i'm gonna marry you so now we have the next episode which was unholy vow which is basically just a weddings episode both sihe and guanele and nyakalo and daddy's weddings like it was so beautiful and i like the contrast between daddy and nyakalo and sihe and guanele like the back and forth the different like we saw the sutu part of the weddings we actually got a glimpse into the sutu tradition and also the zulu wedding we also got a glimpse into that it was actually very beautiful and i enjoyed this episode even though i don't want sisi to marry guanele i'm not gonna lie their wedding was beautiful like Tika's dress was beautiful i like the traditional with the modern twist i like that guanele stuck to the traditional zulu attire everything just went well there were no interruptions and i was really really hoping that luro would come and stop the wedding and cause drama but I doubt he even knew that the wedding was happening. I doubt he knew that Sisi was getting married. Everything goes well without any interruptions. They get married. It's all cute and sweet. But then we actually see Ubandile. And now let me tell y'all. This is the beginning of the character assassination of Ubandile. Like his downfall is starting right here, right now. I feel like by the end of the season... His character is completely going to be changed. He's no longer going to be like the caring brother, the loving husband, the dutiful father. Like he's just going to be a monster by the end of this. And I hate that they're doing this to Ubandile because his character was so nice. We were rooting for him. But in this scene, from this moment, I'm just like, Bandile, are you mad? His behavior was actually very disgusting very very disgusting so he goes to no and he's like oh so he's still not coming back home blah 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 he's trying to beg her to come home then all of a sudden he changes he's now drunk he's had a bit too much but that's no excuse and it's like oh so you don't want to come back am i asking you but i'm demanding i'm not asking you but i'm demanding that you come back home or is somebody effing you? Are you already sleeping around? Because when you got married, it wasn't a horse wedding. It was a proper wedding or are you being a B word. Like it was just a lot. Like he was calling her all sorts of names. He was accusing her of all sorts of things, of cheating. No, like obviously leave, she storms off. She's like, you're not going to talk to me like this. And you're drunk and I'm not going to have this conversation again. I'm not coming back until I'm sure it's safe or you sell the farm and we live together because i'm not gonna put my child's life in jeopardy i hear her chat as well he now goes and flirts with the detective and he actually takes her home and they sleep together which was disgusting because you were just accusing uno Luadli. and then on this side unyakalo and daddy's wedding it was so beautiful as well so we're sitting Unyakalo is having a conversation with her uncles and her mother yo even her mom is scared of her she's like yo hi african spicy i'm oh, she's like hi Nyakalo, you are a top dog i salute you ha and she's like i came in this chemical engineering that you're doing to a point where you even got a wedding at su in such a short space of time she's like ah Nyakalo, i salute you 
eye and she's actually shocked that her herbs are working it's like you don't believe in the power of your own muti <laughs> and obviously Unyakalo is going to deny that she gave oh, Tani a love potion Tani was the most unserious crew ever the way he was dancing the shades on the top of his forehead like he was really so unserious he wasn't even following culture if they wanted him to do things culturally he's just like ugh man I'm exerting my dominance over this whole situation <laughs> yo uh uh but anyway their wedding was so beautiful it was the first time i actually saw suits with traditional wedding i'd never seen it before it was nice to get a glimpse that the cultural representation even though they don't really do things culturally like they didn't follow culture half the time but it was nice to see and then we see Nyakalo going back into her mother's in Dumba. She gives her more muti. And I'm like, girl, this can't be the move. Like, if you're going to keep your relationship or your marriage intact, using Amakambi and muti, just don't get married. Because this is too much work. And this regimen that her mom has her on, like, you must go and you must bath with this for 30 days. And then bath with it once a week and then find a corner to speak to you the ancestors and do this and bring this oh i could never i could never do all this for man not gonna you weaken the knees and you need to stand up but their wedding also goes on without any hassle without any interruptions or anything bad happening and i was starting to wonder where is uluru and Moritlu, when are they coming back home? But then we see Lita shows up. Lita is that lady, Eddington's wife, the one where CK stayed at their house while she was looking for Uluru in Lesotho. So she shows up and she's like, Hey, let me tell you what Lad is doing. He's stealing and he also threatened me. He came to my home, threatened me, wanting information out of me. You guys need to stop him. And obviously, Usifufan is like, I need to go back and actually help because Lad is getting out of hand. So now we see the morning after Obandile has sex with a detective while he was busy accusing Unolo and But anyways, Uspamula sees them but obviously he's gonna keep quiet to preserve his job but he does try here and there to actually advise Bandile without actually being obvious about the fact that he saw him and the detective together during the storms or during the rain some of the cows actually got out so Bandile and Nuspamula go out looking for them and they find them there with random cows that they don't know and Bandile is like you know what this might be the last cow that belongs to my dad but because it's been with other cows that they don't know they don't want to contaminate any of the other animals because there's an outbreak of a flu a horrendous disease that has been overtaking the area of Bergville. So he's like, you know what? I don't want these cows to come back home and actually infect the others. Like rather we lose four cows than lose the whole entire herd. Uspamula doesn't listen. And I'm like, why Uspamula enter this? Why are you doing this? Like, are you trying to jeopardize these people's business? Because why would somebody tell you and give you a valid reason why you shouldn't do something then you go around and do it because you think you know what's best at the end of the day you are an employee here so you must follow the boss's orders and then ubandile gets furious he was so mad at uspamula he even punches uspamula like i feel like the assassination of bandile's character is happening so strong it's one thing after the other first he disrespects his wife Secondly, he cheats on his wife and now he's mistreating with Pamula. Like, and this Pamula is like a golden retriever. He would never hurt anybody. But I understand why he was angry, but violence is never the answer. And he just shoots the cow dead and now they have to separate the cows to make sure that none of the others are infected. And I'm not even gonna lie, this was such a fuller storyline. Like, we do not have to spend a whole four episodes on this cow storyline. We, we honestly didn't and i don't know what was the point of this or the relevant because it doesn't really have a lot of relevance but anyways some of the cows did get infected and they had to be killed but then some of the other cows actually made it and it was a happy ending but i think the storyline really cemented oh bandilens pamula's brotherhood because ooh, 
schools pamula actually tried to run away from home thinking bandila is gonna kill him this story that actually revealed also bandila's insecurities because Andeli and uncle emmanuel they're busy like hey hey your father would have done this your father would have acted like this blah 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 and then we see that he's actually insecure that he's not like his dad and people are expecting him to step into his dad's shoes come on like they're putting too much pressure on him and he finally cracked and he's like i'm tired if you don't have anything good to say just and don't say anything larua is back okay larua and the family they are back and obviously now they're trying to contact the top four to see what they can do about the study situation they go there and they find that the top four has been killed and umusa that little boy he annoys me so much he's now a spy for utlady and he goes and tells them that hey hey Leruo and moritlo are back and they came back with the grandfather i did say that there will be a civil war and i feel like this is going to be the catalyst for the war it's going to be Leruo versus Lari, and i can't wait i want i cannot wait to see Lari's downfall i need him to go down expeditiously ule ruo now is focused on getting his crew back because he wants to get back into raiding the, the grandfather actually gives him um a new idea that they must stop raiding kids at end and they must start now raiding in the free state and so that's what they do they go there to free states and they're raiding and the grandpa you can see his skills there's no need for guns no need for violence no need for threatening the farmers he did everything quietly the cows didn't even make a sound they just left the corral and he just showed him how an og does it okay clarity finds out that the raiders have turned their backs on him and joined Leroux's crew and here goes his impulsive nature because he wants to now go on a killing spree he wants to go and kill moritlu and Leroux and just shoot them dead like that but Unyakalo is saving grace and she's actually the brains of this relationship because she's like calm down we need to come up with a plan where you strike while they're not on guard because they're going to be expecting you to come and attack them right now she's like let's just go drink at the tavern like i'm tired of talking about this but i think part of the reason why she doesn't want Utlari to kill the is because she still loves the Leroux. Like the only reason why she got together with Tladi was to make Leroux jealous. And I'm still standing by this. I'm standing by my statement until she proves to me otherwise. Because why would she be fuming and be so angry that the Leroux is seeing Usik? And then on the other hand, we see with Detective and Ubandile, they're forming a whole situation. Shop. So they're still sleeping together. Ubandile is begging Nolandle every day to come back, but he's busy sleeping with this detective and they even form like an agreement that you know what we're not gonna catch feelings uh, we're just sleeping together blah 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 uh. but there wasn't really a lot of kzn storyline these episodes these last few episodes were actually based or centered around the lesotho so let's go back there because i cannot deal with the mandir and the detective i feel like if i start i'm never gonna stop so utlari and Una, Nyakalo, they went to the tavern and they find Leroux there and they get into this huge fight obviously Leroux wins the fight because Tladi can't fight Tladi wants revenge so while Leroux and his grandfather are in south africa selling cattle they actually kidnap his mother Umoritu. when he comes back they're like hey hey if you want to save your mother come alone and he goes there and utlari actually tricks him into putting his gun down and i'm like Leroy, first of all, you're too trusting. And second of all, your moral compass shouldn't apply to people like Tladi. Like, at some point, you need to learn to be heartless. Utladi would have never put his gun down, and he probably would have shot you while your gun was down. But obviously, we still need an antagonist, so Tladi is going to survive for the meantime because he's the one fueling the drama and the conflict in the story. Leroy actually puts the gun down, but then utlari has a second gun in his belt like obviously we expected that now they're vulnerable to utlari but then the grandfather actually saves them but what we didn't anticipate is that nyakal is gonna sneak behind the grandfather and shoots him and the grandfather dies and here i am thinking you know what daddy still has some humanity because you can see that he feels bad after seeing that the grandfather is dead and i'm like oh man Tladi still has some humanity to him maybe 
his plan wasn't really to kill anybody maybe just to get Leroux to back down but no what does daddy do in the next scene like i'm like as soon as i'm like having a bit of grace for him giving him the benefit of the doubt what does he do he goes to bandile at okabeni and tells him the same lies that he told cc that Uleru was the one who killed their parents and that he even reveals that Usihe actually was in a relationship and sleeping with Uleruo. Like, it was a whole big mess and I'm like, Daddy, what was the point of doing this? It was such a mess. I was actually bamboozled. I like, I did not expect this. This was not in my bingo card. But I think I did predict this. If you go back and watch like my first review of episode 1 to 5, you will find that I I actually did predict this. I did say that Daddy is gonna find out about Cece and Leroux's relationship. I thought they're gonna capture Daddy while he's on the raid, and then he's gonna reveal everything, and that's how this thing is gonna come out. But I knew that Daddy would be the reason why Ubandile finds out that Usihe was dating Leroux. But now the tricky thing is. Sihe is now married to Wanele and I really do hope that Wanele never ever ever find out about this because this would complicate a lot of things uh, but anyways on this other hand Umba Bandile actually took Bali home to protect her and now you know Lanle she's like you know what it's safe you managed to keep our daughter safe and our daughter wants to come back home so i also want to come back home i miss you and then they make up and they get back together and i'm like in the why did they act like they were getting a divorce in the first place just because uno Lanze left to go back home it was for the child's safety not because she doesn't love ubandile anymore so why were they acting distant with each other and not loving on each other like they were acting like complete strangers as if they were getting a divorce while Noland is back home now the detective comes over with a bottle of wine and i'm like <laughs> it's me it's a detective like to just come into a married man's home in the middle of the day with a bottle of wine obviously the workers are around everybody's around but Noland is back so Oh, detective was so angry, like she was so disappointed you could see that she had egg on her face as soon as she saw no and no she's like oh this is my husband's favorite thank you we're definitely gonna enjoy this bottle but you can actually see that like you can see that no one suspects something and i'm asking myself i hope she finds out but i doubt she's gonna leave him like he called her a whore a bitch accused of all sorts of things and she came back anyway so in the end ubandile no longer make up ubandile now just found out this information about Usihe. Usi, she knew that uleru killed their parents and that she was sleeping with him and yeah guys that is outlaw season one episode 25 to 30 please do let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below like and subscribe turn on the notification bells so that when i post the next video you guys will be notified and i will see you guys in the next one